Any young'uns uh, need to come up here and hear something? Uh, I, I, there may be some back in the nursery, are there? Any young people? Any little ones? Man, I... T- oh, all right, all right, come on. Yeah, just come up in there. Yeah. Yeah, come on. There you go. Good. Anybody else? Appreciate it. Good. Can you repeat after me? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Isn't that cool? Good. Come over here. I'm going to give you a star. you that he counts the star and he knows you by name. Good. Thank you. So when you all, your test is that when you go out, you count how many lights are on that tree. And You know, one of the most powerful things that happened in this particular gospel, I guess uh, 30, I've, that, this makes my 32nd sermon because every year we have the same lesson every year and every year I say I don't get it every year it's one of those kind of profound pieces of literature and stuff that I just don't always get it because I'm accustomed being raised in the correct way of learning things I want to explain everything don't don't y'all I got how many times we hear people why did he do that why didn't you know that joke, don't you, about the kid? And the, he's going in the kitchen, and mom said, Now listen, don't get into the cookie jar. And he said, Mm hmm. And then go, now, now listen to me, repeat after me, don't get into the cookie jar. Mm hmm, okay. Then she leaves. Now you can guess what's coming next. And so into the kitchen he goes, and he climbs up, and, and then suddenly gets in the cookie jar. About that time, mom comes in and said, did I not tell you to not get in the cookie jar? And he said, "Uh uh-huh. Did I not tell you not to get in the cookie jar? "Uh Uh-huh. Why did you do it? I don't know. You know that story. Most of us are that way. I don't know. We just sometimes do things. And you and I oftentimes fall in that trap when we're trying to explain everything that can possibly be explained. And in so explaining, we forget to explore the glorious impossibilities of God. In this particular passage, and the Word became flesh. On one level, we all know what that is. I've read books on it, and I've preached on it. This is the 32nd time. But still don't really grasp the power of what that might mean. And yet, there's something about when I was telling the kids this morning, and it, it came in deeper. That everything that God was and is began before anything began. Do you all follow me on that? That's the power of John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke tells a history of what goes on. In John, he tries to get deep, deeper in saying, look, we need to figure out what God is and how God operates throughout this, the whole of the creation. And so this is what John came up with. Now, I'm going to read just the first part of it again, all right? And then, if anybody wants to tell you what it means, you can stand up. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. How many eyes have already glazed over? And yet every year we hear this one, this one read, because it is in this particular gospel that we get a glimpse of what you and I are made of. All throughout history, people have tried to explain God away, explain how He does things, and yet very few of us can, like a child, just enter in 
to something that's magical. You know, we have all kinds of stuff about light, don't we? Oh, oh praise the Lord, I saw the light. You all know that one, don't you? Or is that too country for you? You don't do that in Episcopal churches, do you? Yeah, because there's a sense in which, I, yet I sing, and there's something in that one little line, I saw the light. We use that all the time. It means I kind of understand what's going on. Ah, and the light came on. Or this little light of mine, I'm going to, you know, we, we all know that one. And yet this little light of mine, if we want to follow it all the way back, has got to go all the way back to in the beginning, there was the Word. All lights, all grace, all truth, all everything began before anything began. Do we understand that one? No. Because we're not, in one sense, we're called to just proclaim the fact that in the beginning was God. That's about all we're supposed to do. And God is somehow becoming light in me. Did you know that? That God becomes dwelling in each of us. The Word dwells in us. And the Word, here's where we get into real trouble. The Word sometimes never leaves us. We're not somehow making the Word in us flesh. You know, that Eliza Doolittle and My Fair Lady sings this most wonderful song. You know, she said, I don't know, somebody's trying to court her. I don't, you don't do that. Say that today. They say, words, 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 words. I'm sick of words. Don't speak of words. Do you know what the next line is? Show me. There are so many words going around our culture today that it would be great if we could ever see some of those words become flesh. Love, that's a great word, isn't it? Don't give me words, what? What? Show me. And God so loved the world that He showed up. And sometimes you and I need to show up just because we are God's. My family and I, Chad, when he was little, went to the Grand Canyon. And we took that, you know, 11 o'clock at night walk around the edge of the canyon. Dumb. Okay? And so we couldn't see. And then all of a sudden, the, 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 the guide shut off his lights. Nobody could have a light on. And if any of you have ever seen darkness, it's Unbelievable. This is the kind of darkness that the writers of Holy Scripture talked about. And when we looked up, um, you, it was like, it wasn't individual stars. They were just billions just covering the whole skyscape. And then guess what? Way over yonder somewhere, somebody flicked on a light, a candle. Or was it a cigarette lighter? I don't know. But do you know what? It became so clear that we knew it somehow brought comfort. And I could remember Christmas Eve, we were singing Silent Night. What did we have in our hand? A little candle. I mean, you know, it's just a candle. And yet it takes on the real power of being Jesus' light in us. Same thing as I wanted the kids to go look at their Christmas trees. Each light reminds us of the light of Christ that's come and made a dwelling with you and me. I have this sense, I'll, I'll teach you one little something. If you have your, I want you to find the collect on the front page of your handout, okay? This is an exercise. See, I cannot not teach. You'll have to forgive me on that. Where it says, Almighty God, comma, you see that? I'm going to introduce you to something. You already know this. But this is a piece of genius when you get right down to it. How the Episcopal and Anglican traditions have come up with collects. It starts out, most all of them start out with, Hello God. Almighty God, dear Jesus, comma. 
You all right? Let's just try that. Let's just try that. Let's address God. Okay, ready? Almighty God. All right, now this time, let's say it like you are praying it, okay? Almighty God. Now, what was the difference? There's a way of saying the words. There's a way of praying the words. Now, here's another little clue on this wonderful thing. The next, you find the colon. Do you see the colon? Okay, I like to call that the theology before the colon. This is a statement of faith. We can't prove it. It's just whether or not we believe it or not. Okay, now let's go from the comma to the colon. Ready? Here we go. You have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate. Now see, can you prove that? Can anybody prove it by the scientific method? Anything like that? No, that's one of those glorious impossibilities that are called, we call faith. I believe it. Okay, let's try that again. You, you have, start right there. Ready? You have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Now, when you say us this time, think in your head, me. Okay? Now this time we're going to say hello to God, comma, and then the theology before the colon. Ready? Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Armed with that kind of knowledge, you and I are called to step out and do something that says, I believe that. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.